Hey, I was uh, re-wrapping a handle here and I was going to do another one. But I thought I'd show you something. You know, I always wrap this hockey tape around any of the axes that I use for splitting. You know, and it, it's not a thing to prevent overstrikes or to, to save it from that because nothing will save them from that. But this is, when you're splitting, like I was splitting oak, uh, it's a kind of a gnarly, stringy stuff. And you make a split and there'll always be cross grain pieces that are in there and they rub against the handle and if they continually do that, they will chew a big punk, chunk out of the handle, which of course weakens it. So I always, any other ones that I'm gonna use for splitting, I always tape them. And that's where this, this big Collins is, it's a five pounder and it, it's a good splitting ax as far as splitting axes go, but I don't often use an ax for splitting, I use a maul. Now this is that Husqvarna maul and I've got to redo the tape on it. But now this tape has been on there, you know, well, all last season and then so far this season, at least. It might have been even longer than that. But it's starting to get tore up now. But it saves that wood. You know, it saves you having to replace those handles. So it's well worth doing. But what I'll do is I'll just cut this old stuff off of here, scrape the handle down and repine tar it, and then wrap it with a tape like what this is. And this stuff is kind of odd in that it's, it isn't adhesive, it's the hockey tape. It's a, like a friction tape. It's tacky, but it, it isn't uh, like an electrical tape. But there is a certain amount of tackiness to it. But normally when you wrap them then, on the last wrap, uh, I always overlap it. You know, so I go double thickness down, double thickness back. And then when I get back here, I will split the tape because you can, you can tear it right down the, the center, you know, to, to make a split in it. Then bring one side over the other and then tie the knot right behind the handle you know, on the right behind the head. And that works good. But it saves a lot of wear and tear that normally you get. And like I say, it's not from overstrikes, it's from the cross grains, especially when you get down on a portion near the butt of the tree where you're dealing with uh, kind of the grain twists. You get a lot of that. And I have had axes where it chewed up like a half inch of that. You know, still works, but it, eventually you're going to have to replace the handle. That's why I like to keep ahead of it with that tape. Now, I don't tape all of them. Like, this is that little... It's a Flint Edge Kelly that I bought at that auction sale. And I put a boy's axe handle on it. And this has actually become a, a really a favorite little axe of mine for chopping. But I don't do splitting with this kind of axe. So this one, I don't bother taping. But I was going to show you, I talked about this before. You know, when you get a handle, they come, a lot of times they're like this, you know. Well, that really doesn't do you any good unless you trim that down and move the head back some. What it actually does, it concentrates all the stress right here. Well, you can see on this one, I've thinned that all out. I've taken that completely down, got rid of that big hump on top. You don't need it, and then it it actually makes it so the the stress is spread out over a larger area. Because otherwise, you, you'll tend to break them right here, uh, particularly if you do any twisting on them. This way, the whole thing can flex for a bigger area, not just strain right there. So that works very well. Like I say, I've been very fond of this little ax. But you run into that a lot of times where they'll have that big shoulder. In fact, many times I'll end up knocking that shoulder, bringing the head way back to make use of that heavy meat in there. Like this one, I'm sure. Yeah. So I shortened this one up a good couple inches, but it got me back 
to use that that heavy part here and more of a, a taper going into here. But I like that, but it's good on a you know on an axe you're not using for splitting wood, just for chopping branches and stuff is where this is handy for limbing. But for something that you're splitting with, or even if there's a possibility of splitting, I always wrap them. Just saves a lot of aggravation down the line. And the stuff is cheap. You know, I've got many rolls of this. I also use that on, on my dog sleds. On, there's what's called a brush bow in the front. You know, the front of the runners, and then there's a bow that goes around. Well, you end up, you know, hitting brush and bouncing off trees and whatnot. Well, I wrap it with this stuff, and that gives it just that much more protection. I also use this on the driving bowl, the part that you actually have your hands up on because it's got a certain amount of tackiness to it. You know, regular, just hard wood, it's hard, very hard to hang on to. You'll slide off. This stuff makes a good grip. But it has to be this stuff. That plastic stuff, I've seen people wrap axes with that plastic electrical tape. That doesn't do any good. That just fractures right away. It doesn't last at all. This stuff, like I say, at least one season, probably closer to two on that tape, and that's splitting that really gnarly oak. And by the way, this this is a Husqvarna one, great tool, but this isn't the splitting axe, that's a shorter thing. This is the maul, which has the hardened end, which you can actually drive wedges with. Well, this happens to be that too, that's a rafting axe. You know, normally you don't drive a wedge with an axe, or at least a steel wedge, but both of these I could do that with. But invest in some of this, it's well worth the money. Just save the aggravation in the long run.